Kiara, thank you for the kind introduction. I have to tell you, it is a privilege to be introduced by a UAW member, so thank you. A few thank yous. Incredible Mayor Lori Stone, thank you. Thanks for the warm invitation. Uh, Congresswoman Haley Stevens, again, thank you. We know how important it is to have friends. Uh, I'll have to tell you, too, it will be much better when the House of Representatives has Democrats having the gavels. So let's send Carl Malinga to the Congress. Make sure we get this done. You, uh, and again, uh, the privilege, I had the chance to serve with your incredible Senator. Uh, Debbie Stabnow is the epitome of what a public servant looks like. Thank you, Senator Stabnow. And once again, she needs more company. Uh, you need to send and have Senator Slotkin as be our next senator. Make sure that gets done. And, and this is one I know you all know it, but I'm bringing this from the rest of the country that knows it too. You have got a hell of a governor in Gretchen Whitmer. So. <laughs> And to the folks here at Macomb County Community College, thank you for building the future and the skills necessary to move folks into the middle class. We're grateful you hosted. Before we get started, I just wanted to say, I know you're all thinking about it too, our hearts going out to those communities across the Southeast that have been devastated by Helene and then Milton. Uh, Vice President Harris, President Biden, watching developments closely, working with states, local governments, and the governors. She'll stand with the people of the region every step of the way until this recovery and rebuilding is done from these storms, because that's what Americans do at a time of crisis. So thank you. All right. You might know I'm from Minnesota, but I, I say this with a pure and true heart on this. How great is it to see the Tigers playing baseball in October? So, to Central. It, it's uh, the it's Central, but uh, look, just one more reason Detroit's a great city, so that's what we know. So. All right, but here's the deal. From the Iron Range to Motor City, our states are united by the spirit of creation. The dignity and pride of working people stretches across this country, and that's exactly what I'm here to talk about today. Kamala Harris and I have a plan to build American industrial strength powered by American workers. And I promise you this, when Vice President and Harris and I are elected, we'll have your backs just like you've had our backs every step of the way. Look, this is a defining arc of the America's economic story. People came here to Michigan from across the nation and across the world for a shot at a better future for their families. And in the process, they built the engine that built this country. Vice President Harris understands that. She grew up in a middle class family, understands that manufacturing jobs are a ticket to the middle class, and they don't require a higher degree many times, and they don't require student debt. Under her leadership, we're winning the race to make sure everything made in America. Kamala Harris has helped spur this resurgence of American manufacturing, especially here in Michigan. As Vice President, she invested in working people. And today, there are more factories getting built, more auto and construction jobs, and more American energy being produced than any day when Donald Trump was president. She's proud to be part of the most pro-labor administration in American history, unafraid to walk picket lines and demanding better pay and better working conditions. She walked those lines with UAW workers. And she fought side by side to save those pensions for over a million union members. Because you see it and you know she knows it, she understands that unions and working people are the backbone of this country. As governor of Minnesota, I had the privilege of signing one of the biggest packages of pro-worker policies in history into law. And now Minnesota is one of the best states for workers in the country. That, that's our vision for every state across the country. Now look, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, they got a little different view of things. Just yesterday, Donald Trump was in Detroit and he said, our whole country will end up being Detroit. You're going to have a mess on your hands. Well, 
look, I know you don't, that's not unexpected for him. That's exactly what he's going to do, tear down America. But if the guy would have ever spent any time in the Midwest, like all of us know, we'd know Detroit's experiencing American comeback and renaissance. <laughs> Look, I'm a twin sin and you whipped our ass. We know where this is. Detroit's there, so we know. City's growing, crime's down, factories are opening up. But those guys, all they know about manufacturing is manufacturing bullshit every time they show up. Every time they show up. Look, this guy has spent his life, Trump has spent his life talking a big game, but he has been an absolute disaster for working people. One of the biggest losers of manufacturing jobs of any American president in history. Under Donald Trump, we saw 280,000 Michigan jobs gone. 30,000 of those manufacturing jobs, gone. Nearly 9,000 auto industry jobs, gone. Trump's presidency was an endless string of broken promises. He actually came here to warn when he first ran, and he promised you, under a Trump presidency, you won't lose a single plant. Technically, it wasn't a lie, because he lost six of them. Not one. So, as they fact check me, I got it right. They lost six of them. Look, he lost the GM transmission plant down the road. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. He promised to fight for union workers, repeatedly turned his back on him. He even encouraged automakers to move manufacturing out of Michigan and go to anti-union states so they could pay their workers less. There's the reason that the UAW members endorsed Kamala Harris and your president and many of your members called him exactly what he was, a scab. All right, we all get it. Americans worry about it. He promised you he would stop the offshoring of jobs. But he cut taxes for corporations that during his presidency shipped 200,000 jobs overseas. He awarded $425 billion in federal contracts to companies that were offshoring those jobs. So some of you, this is spinning right now, you're thinking, so he gave your tax dollars to companies who sent your jobs abroad. That's Donald Trump. As a result of his trade wars, his disastrous mismanagement of COVID, at the end of his presidency, he had wiped out more than half of the manufacturing jobs that had been created in the decade before he came in. He was asleep at the wheel while China sees the advantage. And now he says we should just let China dominate the auto industry. But it's no surprise Trump's all talk when it comes to being tough on China. Some of you heard this. We just found out his Trump-branded Bibles. Yeah, they're printed in China. This dude even outsourced God to China. So just so we know. Again, I'm going to try and be generous here. <laughs> I don't blame him. He didn't notice the Made in China sticker because they put it inside a place he's never looked in the Bible, so. Look, while Trump was abandoning American manufacturers, Vice President Harris was there overseeing the creation of over 400,000 jobs right here in Michigan. 20,000 manufacturing jobs, and more than 250,000 new auto jobs across this country. So while Trump lost six of those plants, more than 20 have been opened under Kamala Harris's leadership. Now look, we all talk about this, and I get it. Some of those plants are going to produce electric vehicles. And I know there's some folks a little skeptical. Look, I'm a car guy. You get a little skeptical about this, it's the future. But here's my take on so many of these things. It should just be your choice. We need to make those choices affordable and available to people. Nobody's mandating anything to you. If you want to drive like I do, a 79 International Harvester Scout that is sweet as hell, um, I'm just telling you that, knock yourself out and drive it. But look, this is about the future of the auto industry. She wants to make sure that it's not just EVs are made in China, but they're made here in the United States by United Auto Workers and let people buy them. Look. We got to make EVs. 
We got to make internal combustion. We got to make hybrids along with the batteries and chips so the auto industry stays competitive and can keep the jobs right here in Michigan. That, that's exactly what the administration did by encouraging GM to reinvest in the Lansing Grand River plant. Vice President Harris cast the deciding vote on that piece of legislation. It made sure that half a billion dollar investment in Michigan would happen. One of those, that, that plant itself, saved 650 jobs and created 50 new ones by that investment. Those are good UAW jobs. But Donald Trump and, and, and J.D. Vance can't be satisfied with that. J.D. Vance said if he and Trump were elected, they would maybe cancel those grants, shutting that plant down. And he said not to worry about it, he said, because those jobs are just table scraps over there, table scraps. Tell that to 650 families who feed their families with those table scrap jobs. That's how this works. Look, we got to talk to our neighbors. These guys couldn't give a damn about Michigan workers. They care about their billionaire friends like Elon Musk. Now, look, this is the guy. This is the guy. Remember, the guy, they caught him on tape, Elon Musk and Donald Trump talking. They were laughing about the idea of firing striking workers. He'd go in there and fire them before they can go on strike. Meanwhile, Musk is building his new auto plant. Not in Michigan, in Mexico. Going to build it in Mexico. And he rolled out, going to get his parts, red carpet, from China. So this is the guy that wants to be our economic czar for the country, the guy who wants to fire workers and bust unions, a guy who wants to take auto manufacturing to Mexico and source it with Chinese-made parts. You talk to your neighbors and friends and tell me if anybody in Michigan thinks that's a good idea, because it sure the hell isn't a good idea. Look, but it's not enough. You go out and talk to them. You talk to folks. We'll tell them who they are. Tell them who Donald Trump is. Tell them these policies. But we got to give them something to vote for. We got to tell them what we stand for and what we want to vote for. So here, let me tell you exactly what Vice President Harris and I will do. We're going to create an American forward strategy for manufacturing, one that builds on the historic investments, bipartisan infrastructure law, CHIPS Act, Science Act, Inflation Reduction Act, creating all kinds of new opportunities, ones that empowers American workers, revitalizes manufacturing communities, leads us into an industries of the future, and keep out innovating and out competing the rest of the world. We never fear the future. You build the future, and this gives us the opportunity to do it. And look, industry's telling this, and a President Harris will do it. We need to release the full potential of American industry, cut red tape so we can build more and build faster. We'll create new American forward tax credits, ramp up investments to create more jobs in strategic industries that are essential to economic growth and national security. And these tax credits will reward companies that guarantee the workers' right to organize. <laughs> Pretty frustrating to see your tax dollars go to companies that bust unions instead of giving them to that. We'll make sure they go to companies that encourage you to unionize and work together to grow America. <laughs> And many in this room know, and I see this as a teacher and as a, a father of a young son, looking at and encouraging him to get into the trades, eliminating unnecessary degree requirements, increasing skill development for over half a million federal jobs. Because Kamala and I believe, like you, all of you do, is if you have the skills to do the job, you should damn sure be able to get the job, whether you have a degree or not. So look. Setting a goal of doubling the number of apprenticeships and other training opportunities that lead straight into good paying union jobs by the end of the first term is the goal to get done. As President Kamala Harris has said, and she will, and we will be there and you will be there when she signs the PRO Act, making it easier to form a union. We'll have the back of UAW and the Stellantis workers when promises made are not being kept. We'll reform tax laws to make it easier for businesses to let workers share in companies' success. And we will never let other countries like China undermine those investments with unfair trade practices. Look, that includes supporting American-made products and steering 
all the federal contacts, your tax dollars, toward firms that commit to producing here at home, hiring union labor, hiring American workers. So there it is. That's our plan. If they ask you, what are you going to do and what are they going to do? And there's a track record of Vice President Harris and myself of not just talking about it, but making it happen. And what happens then is the middle class rises. People start to not just get by, they thrive. That's the goal. But I want to be clear. I've also at times said Donald Trump ha doesn't have a plan, he a concept of a plan at times. <laughs> that wasn't exactly correct. He does have a plan. It's called Project 2025. Just go, go Google this and find the stuff that's in there. And, and I kid you not, there's things in there about privatizing uh, the National Weather Service for weather forecasting, things at a time what you're experiencing. But look, it's worse than that. They pretend like, oh, we don't, we don't really know what that is. We haven't heard of Project 2025. Senator Vance said he knows nothing about it, even though he wrote the foreword to the architect's book. I've never written a foreword to somebody's book, but I'm pretty sure I'd remember who it was if you did that. And these are the guys that wrote this. So look. I coach football for a lot of years. If you're going to take the time to draw up a playbook, you're damn sure going to run the plays. And that's what Project 2025 is. And I'm telling you, this thing is a damn nightmare. His Project 2025 would repeal the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, the Inflation Reduction Act. That would threaten hundreds of thousands of new manufacturing jobs, including those right here in Michigan. The ones that J.D. Vance said those 650 jobs were table scraps good paying union jobs, building America, and those are table scraps. He would establish, and every single economist said so, a national sales tax on everything from groceries to prescription drugs. And the estimates is it would cost each and every one of you $4,000. He says those tariffs that Trump will pay, or that, that China will pay Trump's tariffs, you're going to pay them. That's the way it always works. That's exactly what he's trying to do. And there, again, you heard it that idea of a, a plan or whatever. He absolutely tried his entire time in office to repeal the Affordable Care Act, the thing that protects hundreds of thousands of Americans to be able to get affordable health care. And he talked about a Ponzi scheme. This guy, of all the schemes he had, the one that he went after was Social Security and Medicare, things that we pay into. That's the greatest anti-poverty program ever been devised. We pay into it. And I keep saying this. Might not be a big deal for him if you're sitting in Mar-a-Lago and you have a billion dollars that you're not paying tax on, but it's a damn big deal for my nearly 90-year-old mom. That's how she pays her bills. That's how the rest of us think about it. That's the choice that we're up against. So, folks, in this election, we got a chance to turn a page. A new generation of leadership with Kamala Harris. A new way forward from the chaos and the nonsense and the ridiculousness of Donald Trump. And here's the thing. It's a privilege to do it. We've got 25 days to work together to make a difference for the next 40 years, to revitalize American manufacturing, to take our lead, to put the middle class at the center, not the billionaires, to ratchet down the name calling, and just honest to God, not having to listen to this guy again for the next four years. So, look. I'm, I'm talking to a group of folks who know how to work and know what a hard day's work look like. So I know we're asking a lot, but we got 25 days. This is all gas, no breaks, sleep when you're dead type of attitude. I've been saying that, and someone came up to me and said, man, you're taking this way too serious there, Governor. You look like hell, man, we're working on this. Well, I'll look like hell for 25 days if it means putting Kamala Harris in the White House. Americans at the forefront of it. So you know. She says it. You've done it. You've been on the picket lines. You helped build America on this. You know better than anybody on this. When we fight together, we win. When we vote, we win. When we fight, we win. Thank you. Let's get this done.